Our next movie tells the still almost unbelievable story of Patty Hearst. The member of America's most famous newspaper family was kidnapped by an underground terrorist group in the early 1970s and actually joined up with the group. Now, why did she do that? What experiences led her to that decision that would seem to be so alien to her nature? In the movie, we follow the process by which Patty Hearst was brainwashed until she readily agreed with almost anything that the self-styled Symbionese Liberation Army asked her to do. Now, here's a scene after she's been locked for weeks in a dark closet and is finally given the opportunity to view her captors. Take off your blindfold. Welcome. You're now Tanya, a guerrilla fighter in the Symbionese Liberation Army. The film was directed by Paul Schrader, who restages some of the best-remembered episodes in Hearst's life, including the shocking footage of a bank security camera showing that Patty Hearst herself was part of an SLA stick-up. We the SLA, and this is Patty Hearst. Patty Hearst is played in the movie by Natasha Richardson in a low-key performance that portrays a young woman of no strong opinions who was basically just programmed by the SLA to be their instrument. Name? Trisha Campbell Hurst. Occupation. Occupation. You got to have an occupation. Urban gorilla. And that made news around the world, not just that she was kidnapped, but that she actually seemed to join the SLA. This could easily have been a sensational movie full of sex and violence and all the speculation that people had at the time, but that wouldn't really have answered any of our questions. And the way that Paul Schrader has approached the subject, we do begin to understand how Patty Hearst, this comfortable child of a famous newspaper family, was converted into an apparently loyal member of the SLA. We also understand, for that matter, how the same process might work on any of us. I could feel that I could have been turned into an SLA member by the time I went through <laughs> what she went through. You wouldn't yeah, rob yes, a bank. Yes, I would have if I'd gone through that. This is a surprisingly low-key, quiet film, and a sad one, too. And Natasha Richardson does an effective job of portraying this woman who was suddenly snatched from the middle of her quiet life and remade into one of the strangest and most unbelievable figures of the 1970s. I want to focus on the last thing you said because that was the appeal of the movie for me, bringing back the tail end, if you will, of the 60s, mm -hmm. the hippie era. Because I think that this film, because one another thing the trader does is portray this Symbionese Liberation Army, and I remember at the time, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I thought this was some big massive outfit. Mm -hmm. He portrays this as a bunch of people, some well-intentioned, some misguided, some dopers, but a very small group of people, sort of a fringe mm -hmm. element. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was interesting. As for the central character, I think this uh, actress, Natasha Richardson, does an extraordinary yes, job she does, yes. of, of doing just what you're saying, which is not over... She's the center of the movie, mm -hmm. but she doesn't play herself as the center. The, and it's true. The events that are happening to her are the center. So everything is just hitting her, hitting her, and we're watching her, trying to figure out what's going on. Could, w could we be turned? You're quite right to say that. Would we be turned? How, what would be the our whole thing is It has less to do with politics than it has to do with the brainwashing techniques of a cult because yeah. Sinque, who was the leader, yeah. basically has all of these people completely under his sway and they don't have any, really, any freedom of And will then at you all. wonder what he's up to. I mean, yeah. it really is a, a, a great study, a, a reminder of a bygone era.